Welcome back to Do No Harm, where we fight for patients and against identity politics in healthcare. Podcast hosts Benita Cotton Orr and Dr. Stanley Goldfarb will highlight the medical industry's most pressing issues and dangerous trends, and discuss how we can achieve a better healthcare system for all. All right, so. Do No Harm, the name of the organization comes from the Hippocratic Oath. Let's talk a little about the Hippocratic Oath and the obligations that come with that. Sure. Well, the Hippocratic Oath is a wonderful statement about the need to care for individual patients. And as originally formulated by Hippocrates, you know, many centuries ago, uh, it even spoke about uh, treating slaves equally as treating everyone else uh, at a time when, of course, slavery was somehow an acceptable rampant, notion yeah. and, and rampant. And um, but so the point was, it really is a, a creed of treating patients as individuals and not assuming anything about their social condition should influence the way you treat them. And do no harm, the reason we, we took that name was because we do want to reflect this traditional role of the physician as treating the individual and the importance that seeing that patient in front of you as an individual and not as a member of some group that you have to treat differently than members of other groups simply because of somebody's sense of what a historical uh, issue was and how that plays down on on current uh, times. So um, under under um, a Hippocrates in modern times, would you say that Hippocrates would feel that his mission had failed because he hadn't freed the slave the slave under the uh, the 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 woke approach now? Um, yeah, well, it's hard to know. I, again, I think that certainly was a, a social issue. And, and, and there's no question that physicians living in the early 19th century and the 18th century uh, were part of a society that treated groups of people very unequally because of their membership in a group. Mm-hmm. That's changed. There were, and there were terrible inequalities and, and uh, unfair practices that occurred even into the 20th century. That's changed as well. So in order to try to make the argument that one needs to change current practice because of historical practices is only valid if the current practices reflect historical practices. It's not valid if we're dealing with a whole different kind of organization. And I think the notion in in American society today um, that black individuals are denied opportunity is just really absurd and it doesn't reflect the reality. And the current reality is that a black student who's a brilliant young person is going to have wonderful opportunities. True, unlike perhaps what it was when I went to school and I, I went to a, a school that was you know, considered an elite school. And we had, out of 800 students, we had one black uh, student in our class. He went on to become a professor of history at a very another elite institution. He was a brilliant young person and a wonderful person. Nowadays, that's not the reality at all. And mm-hmm. to claim that we're living in that same reality is just absurd is the only way to describe it. And yet, that's the story that we hear, that in fact, we're still treating black patients as, as patients the way they were treated at a time when uh, there was terrible... Uh, racial injustice that occurred, particularly here in the United States. And that's just no longer the case. And anyone who claims it's the case is being completely intellectually dishonest about it. So uh, as a black person from South Africa, um, I, it, it, I'm surprised by all of this, you know, because I, I see America as a melting pot and you have Jamaican Americans. Now, I don't like the, the hyphenations, don't get me wrong. You know, somebody from Jamaica, somebody from Nigeria, somebody whose family grew up in the South since the, you know, since the era of, of, of slavery and, and putting all these people into one pot and saying, okay, um, Black people are a minority in this country, um, 
and 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 grouping them all together and therefore they all deserve special treatment whether admission into school whether treatment at a medical center how do you see that um in the face of the do no harm mandate that you have as a physician yes no i think it's antithetical to what the way physicians ought to treat patients and and for perhaps the the most important reason is is a question of trust now to give an example um one of the Harvard hospitals, teaching hospitals, Brigham and Women's Hospital, has decided that it's going to provide a differential kind of care for patients that come into the emergency room with a condition called congestive heart failure. They found historically that black patients who came in with that complaint, that medical problem, were referred to a general medical floor, and white patients who came in with that problem were referred to a cardiology service. Now, the difference between the referral rates between these two groups was rather small. It was about a 15% difference. So uh, something like 57% of the white patients got referred to the cardiology floor and 48% or so of the black patients got referred to the cardiology floor. So there was a differential between the way they were treated. This has led them to say that when black patients come in to the emergency room with that complaint, and their, the decision is made to admit the patient to the hospital, a prompt will appear on the, on the electronic medical record to say that in the past, black patients have not been referred to the right floor and make sure that you, you act properly. Well, when you look at, the, at the, the patient groups that this study was performed on, it turns out that it wasn't just that they were black versus white. It was turns out the black patients had different medical problems than the white patients. The white patients had medical problems that actually would benefit more frequently from going to the cardiology floor. And the black patients tended to have medical problems that would actually do better on a general medical floor. So the Brigham has accused its own emergency room doctors of operating in a biased fashion. They never asked them, why do you admit patients to one floor versus the other? They just assumed that this historical record represented physician bias. And the only way to correct the bias was to refer black patients more frequently to the cardiology floor. Well, that would not, here was an example of treating patients differently based not on their clinical problems, but on their race. Now, if you're a white patient that comes into that service and you don't get referred to the cardiology service and you hear about this because it was published in the lay press in Boston, mm -hmm. would you ask the question, what's going on here? Why are you referring me to this different floor? And conversely, if you're a black patient who gets referred to the general medical floor because the physicians know that's better treatment, better treatment for them because, in fact, more of the black patients had kidney problems that contributed to oh, their heart failure okay. and would do better in a general medical floor, which is more organized to treat a variety of medical problems than it is to treat the cardiology problem itself as the only problem, then you'd lose, you'd ask the question, why am I being referred to this floor when, in fact, medically, that's the best reason for them. So this is an example of it's it's a it's a do gooders attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Dickens called do gooding attempts the the mirage of of uh, of good deeds, the mirage that one is actually doing something that's beneficial when in fact one isn't. One's actually making a a, a real error in uh, forcing patients to one floor or another based on their uh, on their race, not based on their medical problems. So, you know, that's an example of why this this. This is an example of treating people as individuals runs into this sort of racial essentialism that's being forced on, on the medical community um, and, and something that, that's going to lead to less optimal medical care and distrust on the part of, of patients, of their physicians. So I think a, a bullet point with do no harm would be don't let them cherry pick the data. It sounds like there's a lot of that going on. Yes, actually, one of my real interests has been in looking at this very, very large literature that's been published about um, the disparities in healthcare. And while there are some investigators who are very careful to point out the, some of the reasons when they identify a disparity, often they'll opt for a description that says, well, part of this is due to racism without evidence that that's the case, without even looking at their own data carefully, or without uh, attempting to to show the complexity of medical decision making, as an example, the, 
what's going on in the Harvard Hospital. See, and again, what I found when I looked very carefully at that particular study, which is widely quoted in the medical literature, widely quoted, um, is that the, the white patients had much more frequent problems with heart valve disorders that made it much more reasonable to send them to the cardiology floor where the techniques were available to treat problems of heart valves Whereas the black patients were much more frequently patients who were on dialysis treatments mm -hmm. and would benefit much more from the general medical floor where it was much more convenient to arrange dialysis treatments than it was on the cardiology floor. So this was an example of actually probably better medical care being uh, turned into an example of racism mm -hmm. and bias on the part of physicians. Okay. So looking at the medical literature, I think reveals many, and, and I could go on and on, to probably the boredom of everyone, uh, explaining these kinds of um, activities. And, and one of our, our efforts at Do No Harm in our research arm is to uh, go through the medical literature, take studies that are widely quoted as supporting the fact that racism underlies disparities in healthcare and pointing out if, in fact, we find that, that these studies are very flawed and uh, represent bias on the part of the investigators and the, and the journals to publish this information. Yeah, and I look forward to talking to that uh, to that issue some more um, in, in our next episode or um, and in the future. So thanks, Dan.